Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's Applied Mechanics session. On today's video, we will be going through centroids. We have covered an example like this before, but this will specifically apply to some. We just wrote a test and this will kind of be a memo. I'm redoing this specific one because I realized that there are still some points of confusion, especially when um, coming to our centroids um, questions, right? So first off, when you get a question like this, it'll probably be in your question paper or you'll be given dimensions. The first thing you do is redraw it exactly as you see it and make sure that you copy the dimensions exactly as they are. Then you can appoint your members. Okay, either you'll pick one, two, three going down or one, two, three going up. And the next step, you are going to appoint your reference point. Okay. So this vertical one will be my reference point for my x axis or for my x bar. So I'll be considering my x bar from the left going to the right. Then this horizontal line will be my reference point for my y bar. So I'll be taking my values of the y bar from the bottom. And what I mean is, so we can already see that this is symmetrical within or along the x axis. Okay. So what I mean is. When you are calculating your x bar for all three of these shapes, and as much as only one touches the axis, you will be considering the distance from your axis of reference to the center of that specific shape. And you'll notice that it will be the same value for all of them. Okay? Since it's symmetrical, it already tells you that your x bar will be right in the middle and it's a value of 200. By looking at that, we already know that once you've calculated your centroid along the x-axis, it should give you a value of 200 because it is symmetrical along the x-axis. But we'll calculate it just to see if this theory works out. All right? Then similarly for your y, it tells you that from the center of each shape all the way to your axis of reference, will essentially be where you calculate your y bar from. Okay? Right. Then, next up, we're going to draw up our table. Okay, so here we'll have 1, 2, 3, and the total. Then here we'll have the areas. And here we'll have the x bar, a x, y bar, then your a y. Okay? So let's start off with our area, our very first one for me, I'll take this as the first, this is the second, this is the third, okay? So our area 200 times 50. Okay, you can write it down or not, it's really up to you. 200 by 50, this gives me 10,000. The second one is 50 times 200, so this is still the same value. The third one, 400 times 50 gives me 200,000, 20,000, sorry, not the numbers escaping me. Then the total there, 40,000, okay? Make sure you write it down, they count for marks. Then now we're going to start off with our x bar. So our very first one is this member on here, and we said we consider the distance from our preferred or from our reference axis to the center of that member. So from here to there to the center of it would essentially be 200, 200, 200 for all of them. This is because the distance from the, that axis of reference to the middle is 200 for all of them. Then AX, you're essentially going to calculate 10,000 times 200. And I get 2 milli. Same will apply on here. 2 milli. Then this will be 4 milli because it's 20,000 instead. 4 milli. Then the total on there will be 8 a milli. Great. Then now we're getting to the y bar. For the first member, we said our y bar will be from the center of this to our axis of reference, right? So remember, we have a 50 on here. We have a 200 on here. And this is a total of 50. So you do half of that 50, which is 25, plus the entire 200, plus the entire 50. And that gives me 275. Okay, for the second one, the member is 200 in length, so half of 200 is 100, plus the entire 50 will be 150. Then the last one um, is just half of the 50 because it's 
along the axis. Then your AY, you do your 10,000 times 275, two, oops, 750, zero, 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 zero. Second one, uh, 10,000 times 151, 1.5 milli. And the last one, 20,000 times 25. There. 500,000, then a total there. Four, seven, fifty, zero, zero, zero. Okay, then now we are one step closer to getting our centroid. So our centroid, that looks wrong. Our centroid along the x-axis will be the sum of your ax over the sum of your area. Okay. So it will essentially be the sum of your AX over the sum of your area. So it will be 8 milli over 40,000. And it's 200. So I believe we have proven our theory on here. That's not it. Next we need to get our centroid along the Y. Total area y over the total of the area, so it'll be that for 750,000 over 40,000. Then you get 118.75 millimeters, and you would have collected your marks. So, in the previous test, I awarded 30 marks to this. I know it looks like quite a bit of marks for just this little step, but one, two, three in the units, one, two, three in the units, one, two, three, four, five. And there you have it. That's essentially how I went about solving it. Or if you had tried this exercise, this is how I would have gone about marking it. But if you have any questions at any point, you know what to do. Adios.